I was, I was like, now if you can find a canal to do that on, that is fun. It's wicked. They're so lethargic, but once you hook them, they're like, it's like a shark. All right. Is it 12 yet? Yeah, I'm excited. I talked to Tom from uh, from from all. Okay. Yeah. Uh, last week I'm. He wanted to come fish with us. You, you guys ever see his show? Yep. I'm glad you guys are still talking. Yeah. I want to try to get him out here to fish. Uh, all right. All right. Um, he said this is a weird year with the ice, so maybe he will, but he's got to check in. Did he call you from the office? Or from the no, phone? I yeah. emailed him. Okay. He's probably from the cell phone. But I sure didn't see old file. So if he comes out, if he comes out, we could really get him to that would be sick. have some fun with it. I even made a I even made a list for myself this year. I usually do off fly. I think we're out here at twelve. Yeah. All right. So hey, my name is Rich. I know we're all excited about <coughs> fishing. Eventually, hopefully. On the on the uh, posters it says fishing for trout and salmon, and everyone assumes we're talking lake trout. But I was saying earlier, so I really want to talk about this year especially small ponds and small lakes freezing or chances are that's where we're mostly going to be fishing so i wanted to talk about mostly also stock trout rainbow trout brown trout salmon i know a lot of my friends will go up to eagle lake and try to catch a brown and they don't have success and um, the only difference between i don't i don't know where we're all at fishing wise but the only reason why i'm doing this seminar is because not because i'm any better of a fisherman just because i spent 30 years of time doing it so i just put more time under my belt and i just experimented a little more with it uh some of this some of this fishing but it's not it's not rocket science one of the most important things with trout to think about and salmon is you look at rainbow trout and you look at salmon and you think of those fish as nomadic that you don't really have a they're 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 like sharks they're just cruising the water column constantly moving following bait so the main thing you want to think about when you're fishing with for rainbows and and salmon is that you're not going to go to the you will find spots that are holding fish but you're going to find fish all over the place so that's where ex experimenting for trout is awesome so in general are we cool with talking about that stuff and then and then at the end talking about lake trout because i think we can cover lake trout pretty quick um are most of you guys typical fishermen jigging bowls both oh, oh. pretty much both right just like just just like me. <laughs> um so one of the things I was, you know, when you think about when you think about salmon and and rainbows, so we'll talk about them. They're pretty similar. Um, specifically, I find that rainbow trout and salmon tend to bite in low lake conditions. So, you know, looking at early morning, late afternoon, and something about salmon that I noticed, which is awesome, is it's like high noon whistle blows and salmon start biting. I if you don't get them that first light you stick around till 12 o'clock i swear something about especially lake george or something about noon salmon to start hit hitting again I, it's just it's, i don't know what it is but it's for the 20 years i've been fishing on lake george i've always caught them high noon or first light and last light so that's that's a good that's a pretty good tip um what i love about fishing for trout and i i fish for everything i think my specialty would be northern pike but i fish for everything and i love fishing for especially years like this i love fishing for trout and then i'll jig for perch and such too when i'm fishing for rainbows but you can experiment with these with these setups and color shiny bright color is is clutch so when you're thinking your tip ups we'll talk about just tip up setup because that's basic and i just set this up so what I have here is, is just some floral carbon, six pound test. You know, imagine this on your tip up line, you got your swivel here. Um, I got a size 18 treble. Things that I would do is I would have a, a red treble hook if I could. I'd have some setup with different, you know, different colors, orange, red. And then I like using beads. And if, if you really want to, you can paint your, if you're really, are you fishing for like finicky fish and real super clear water, you can paint your sinker, you know, red 
or, or you know or orange or bright chartreuse so i'll use beads another thing to think about and i'm gonna i'll be a little scattered brain that's just how i am so we're talking rainbows you can experiment on depths you can also experiment on bait you don't just have to use uh, minnows on your tip-ups one of the best and you, i'm sure half of you guys know this one of the best things for catching rainbow trout through the ice is a night crawler i they just crush them um so on half of my setups on half of my setups i'll have just a typical rainbow trout day i'll have three tip-ups between five and seven foot down under the ice with night crawlers and i'll have a red i use a red and i i, I grabbed a bunch of stuff i might have grabbed them. a red size eight or size six single hook on six pound test fluorocarbon you don't need to use the bead on that you don't want to have anything on your line for that you just want to drop the night crawler down five to seven feet with the minnows um the rosy reds in the, in the cup eight they're awesome because you got that bright orange color swimming around under the ice so rosy reds rainbows and salmon both love those also baby suckers is another hardy bait fish one thing that people don't think about with bait is every single species of minnow you put on your tip up acts differently on your tip up as you know so when you're fishing with hunts or smelt they're pretty similar and what uh, how many times have you gone to your tip up and your smelts wrapped all the way around your your line up top that can that can definitely be avoided for sure by using by using a, a, heavy, a heavy enough split shot and you got to watch your tip up when you set it up and watch that particular minnow and you'll know if he's struggling enough to stay underneath your to stay underneath your rig um and then with your suckers they're looking to they're looking to shoot straight down anyway so most of the time you don't even need a sinker with them smell you really do um rosy reds you definitely need a small split shot but a lot of guys mess up their tip ups have simply because the fish aren't even able to hit the minnow because they they're wrapped up in their line it's it's, it's, it's that it's that simple you could i could be fishing with a guy and i'm like he's not catching any and that's the simplest thing he's, that's the one thing he's doing he's not using the right weight split shot which is a simple fix but it's just something to think about for sure when you're setting your tip ups up um even even using larva on your tip up for brown trout and such is is clutch specifically on lake george for salmon my success and this has always been the case has been with rosy reds and suckers but guys put them five feet seven foot under the ice i literally put my tip up that far under the ice to where this is the bottom of the ice and this is my minnow literally a foot and a half two foot that thing is like right under the ice and there well, a few of the years that you'll see the lake will freeze and you've got that nice black ice you can see the salmon and they shoot right under the ice i mean they are like their their fins are touching under the ice so this year i don't know if i'm sure you guys have heard but the salmon on lake george are hot again and they're back this this fall was epic i was seeing 27 28 29 inch salmon swimming all around just all around the water I'm uh, not making those check this out. I said, did anybody else see it? Did anybody else go down? So what, what happened was they stocked this new breed of salmon. And I don't know the name of it because I'm not too precise on that. But there's a new hybrid of salmon in the lake. And they took off and they're they're growing exponentially. So the fish are between 24 and 30 inches already. And they've only been, only been in the lake for two years. So salmon fishing is going to be exciting if Lake George freezes. Um, Another thing that I love doing for rainbow trout and salmon um, is taking a Mickey fin instead of using a treble hook and putting my minnow right on the Mickey fin so that thing's starting around underneath the ice. Um, and now, so we talked about how to rig tip ups for, for trout and salmon, then it's like, how do you find them? So, this is like a general rule on, on these nomadic fish is early season. You want to look for um, any of your tributary streams coming into your water, um, into your body of water. You want to kind of start there, and you want to start, and you want to work edges, any sort of any sort of uh, structure, you know, steep ledges, transitions. You want to work edges, and you want to 
that's a that's a good early season spot. As you get into mid season, you want to start thinking about deeper water on your lake, the deep maybe some of the deepest water on the lake, and you want to start thinking about those fish being potentially suspended right under the ice in those deeper holes. Um, as you get into late season, you want to start going into um, your outlet where your water is running out of your lake and start fishing around there if it's safe, hopefully. And then also your your edges are always good. Um, that's a good place to start. The cool thing about um, trout in the winter is a lot of guys who just perch fish, they'll catch them in bays. Those bays are holding trout and salmon, especially around here and especially on Lake George, um, and especially recently. My friend was actually just fishing in Dunham's Bay, and, and they, he caught a nice five-pound salmon, and he caught a couple of small salmon. So the salmon are cruising in the bays for smell on Lake George. A lot of these Adirondack ponds, you can use smell. If you can get that, if you can get smelt on your tip up for, for trout and salmon, you're, that's that's awesome. Um, if I'm going too fast or scatterbrained, <laughs> slow me down, tell me what you want to talk about or whatever. So, but that's as far as that goes. Tip tip up presentation. Um, that's that's uh, what I would talk about. And now, as far as brown trout, um, I've always liked. Uh, anything with you know gold golden shiner some sort of some sort of a sucker that's kind of gold colored you know those suckers get you get them if you leave them in a bucket in a white bucket and you and you have light on them they'll actually get whiter they'll, they'll change to the color of the bucket um if you can leave that on our, with a, you know outside with a lamp on it open the bucket up you'll see your suckers will get white they'll turn brighter and then you fish with them uh brown trout Brown trout are they're awesome to see uh, come out of your hole. They're just so beautiful. You get a big, you know, big brown through the ice, and um, they're typically a little deeper, like seven to fifteen feet. You know, is usually where I'm getting them. Sometimes right on the bottom. Um, jigging for trout and salmon, it's it's obviously hard work, but if you can find the trout and salmon, they will. You will. You can jig them, and you're going to be using flashy bright colors clean you know like a like um, like a slender spoon um, or or uh, or your jig and rapalas or oh, jig and rapalas are always great for salmon rainbows um, tipping those with a piece of night crawler or or a minnow tail another huge thing you guys probably already know but I'll reiterate on salmon and trout is they have good noses so I personally use both of these products, and I really, really love them. This is garlic, but I actually use the minnow, and this stuff stinks. It stinks, man. Not this, but if you can find minnow marinade, I've tested it out with a couple of my buddies. I've sat next to them, especially lake trout and rainbow trout fishing, and we, it definitely works. They definitely hit it. This stuff is just some of the best stuff they make. It's smelt oil, so it's awesome. I dumped that. On all my, even on my tip-up setups, even on my night crawlers, just just scent works awesome finding those trout. Um, so basically, would you use the single hook versus the travel with the night crawlers? Single hook, that's what I would use. I would, I would, I would use an orange or a red one myself, color. Um, and I would use a size eight or a size six single hook, which I thought I brought down, but I can't see it on the table. Um, what's the what's the typical length on the mono film? Do you try to go? Well, I actually don't use mono. Well, I, I mean the floor, floor, floor it's would, just you, so would you say eighteen inches? On uh, for trout? Yeah, five feet. For five I, feet. yeah, I didn't talk about that. I vary it between pretty much under the ice to seven feet for rainbow. Um, and a lot of times I fish tight structure. I fish tight shorelines. If I can find. A sunken island, or even a, or even a ridge. I'll fish right up four feet off it. But you know what I mean. I'll get right on the edges. Um, trout are trout are no matter. Like I said, they will go anywhere and everywhere. And early season, especially, you'll catch them right on structure, even. Um, and that's the cool part. You know, when you're trolling in the spring and you get near a rock pile, you might catch a trout or two. But when you can target that through the ice, you can do really well. Especially with salmon too. They'll come right into that, looking for bait. The trout rainbow, rainbow and salmon are constantly moving, constantly chasing bait, and they're one of the most fun fish to try to figure out. You can almost, I've almost thought on Lake George that I could 
that I figured that they had like some sort of pattern because every day you'd fish like one spot and they'd come through there at a certain time and you, you almost think of them like, you know, like just like coyotes or something running through their territory. They, it seems like they almost have a territory they run, but that, that could be just me dreaming it up. But I, I enjoy immensely trying to figure out trout and salmon, uh, stock trout and salmon because it's just, it's exciting to pull those things out through the ice. They're, they're a pretty fish to look at when they're not. Is it true you see once guys are thinking from the setup for these to you get yourself a ways away from the area? As far are you moving into that? Well, I mean, as far as where you say you set up your base camp or. Yeah, I mean, not. I, that's awesome because you also made me think of a few other things. When I set up the lower light conditions the, the, or the poorer the water quality, the higher up the water column I fish. And that's for basically everything. But that's a good general rule. So if you have a if you have dark murky murky water, you want you know your bait halfway up, all the way up to right under the ice. You know, but what you want to do also is buy hole covers, so you're not letting a bunch of unnatural light in. And what I do is if you don't if you are you know if you want to do I just kick slush right in my hole. I'll just pile the hole right up after I after I get my tip up set up. I see my minnows good. I just cover the hole with slush. Just cover the end heap and then if see I use these tip ups so when I get to it and the thing's burning, I can see the top and then I'll just break it out, clear it out. With these tip ups, the reason why I use these for trout and salmon is it's so it's so easy to super finesse these so you can just get that thing just barely touching. So when that fish hits it, it just doesn't feel a thing. So these can be set up and you can raise this up or lower it so you can get that thing just so and these are the, this is the difference between getting a flag and catching a salmon. It's just basically barely having that thing trigger. Obviously, you want the wind blowing at it like this, but you know you, you just basically want that thing set so they can't feel it. Um, salmon are notorious for slamming your minnow and just leaving it there. When you get a hit, you get a flag, you walk to the thing, the thing's not moving. Don't pull it out. Wait five minutes. Sit there because all of a sudden it'll just <laughs> oh, I came back. But that's a common thing for trout and salmon. How many times does that happen to you if you if you wait it out? That happens all the time. Um, that pretty much as far as being quiet. Obviously, if these fish are right under the ice, you don't want to be slamming on the ice all the time, you know. And you're gonna. They're not as bad as walleye because you a lot of times you're fishing over deeper water, but depending on how shallow the water is, you don't want to make a ton of vibration. I myself, I'm like a fanatic about using, you know, a hand auger until the ice is just unbearable. And then we use electric augers, which are super quiet anyways. The ions are like you can't even it's like they're not even making any noise. Um I don't even use my wheeler when I walleye and trout fish most of the time. I just walk. You definitely can catch fish. The good thing about a wheeler is you can set you can set 200 yards on a rock pile there. You can set out in the deep water there, and you can and you can leave those setups there. And you're covering the edges, you're covering the bays, you're covering the stream, and you can run and gun to that. As long as you can see them, you're good to go. As long as you can maintain the tip up, no one's gonna bother you. Um. So we got tip ups pretty covered. But does anybody have any questions? I, I have not fished for splake on the ice, um, but I fish for them as soon as the ice is out. Um, and I've always caught them on the black, um, the, the marmushka jig, the black um, marabou jigs, the hair jigs. Um, from, I mean, most of the splake that we have around here, you can't fish live bait through the ice on for most of the lakes. They don't let you bring live bait or they don't even let you ice fish most of them. Do you have spots where you can splake fish? I believe yeah. yeah, see I haven't I haven't gotten out there. I know I know splake are are a lot like lake trout. Just you just basically want to fish them like a lake trout but but small smaller presentations. The hair jigs in the for me the hair jigs on, on the open water right after ice out has always been really good. Black has always been really good. That's all I got for splake. Um if I had the opportunity to fish more of lake, I would. I basically fish I basically fish a little west of New York, but most of my fishing is at around X. Most of it is around the Scrooge Lake area and a ton on Lake George. I'm pretty much a local boy. Like that's, you know, and this, 
Yeah, me too. But I just bought a place in Coral Lake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be exciting. You want, if you feel free to invite me out. <laughs> um, that is that is what I got for you. I think I'll set up. Does anybody have any questions on that? Sorry, you're reading worms. Night crawlers. So I would take, like I said, a size eight. I would just run that six six pound fluorocarbon, and I would you know just get a good two three foot leader, and I would just just put it through the the, the hook so it's just laying there in natural hole. They um, when they hit the night crawler, you just let them go until they stop and you got them. Um, sometimes you'll fish for rainbows and or salmon and you won't get it. You won't get a single hit. Actually, I brought this stuff down too. They won't get a single you won't get a single hit on a rainbow and or on on the night crawler and then they'll be hitting the minnows. The next day you'll go you'll hit all the night crawlers and all the minnows. So that that's definitely something you don't want to you don't want to put all your tip ups with night crawlers on them so you know that that's the ticket. And that's the cool thing about again the cool thing about these trout species is so experimental and you can never count on this, what you did yesterday being the same thing because they're they're just constantly moving, constantly changing, chasing the bait. Um, any other questions on tip-up stuff? Your bee, that, is that more for an attractor or yeah, you for something else? Yeah, totally an attractor, especially for salmon. Um, I I never fish for salmon without some sort of color on my on my tip-up setup, whether it be a red hook or a red bead or a red sinker. I just always have that because um, it just catches their eye, you know, and, and it seems to work. It even works for lake trout uh, really well when you've got tip-up setups, too. Do you wait? You know, a lot of times you feel like maybe they're cropping it because the, oh, the your split shot maybe be too heavier. The one that you had there that was split shot that was sliding up and down. There, yeah. Was, are you keeping it on? Oh, no, I, I just had to, these stupid uh, Thompson singers are not like the lead ones we had. Right. right. You just have to find, I mean, it's on now. It doesn't yeah. look it, but it is. You just have to find that sweet spot where it's got that little uh, in the indentation and get it right in there. And, Push down pretty hard and check it. The pliers. And if you use it, well, keep it a foot away, probably. Yeah. Well, that is all depending on what I was saying before. The minnow you got. You got to really think about it because what's going to happen is if you got it a foot away and you got a nice lively smell, it's just going to go a foot up and around all the time. So you got to really kind of you got to really think about the weight and and where the, you might have to go down a little further depending on the minnow, but. I wouldn't be too afraid of your sinker, especially if you got it colored, too, which is one of the things that I always do. I do that in Salmon River, too. I color the minnow and the sinker to look like the rock bottom, you know. But these sinkers are so bright, but that's bright and shiny, too. You know, you know on the other hand, it might catch the flash. It might see the flash and like it. You never know. And yeah, yeah, not below. No, I haven't. No, because what happens is I use such a small hook. That if you put them below, it'll interfere with your, it'll interfere with your, uh, it'll interfere with your hook set. So what you'll end up happening is that'll act as a, as a guard. For your, your, like if this were down, picture this below, level with my hook. You know what I mean? That, that's uh, that's that's uh, not aiding you getting them. To, if they hit that minnow, then you end up like that, and they, they don't they don't swallow hook. That's the only reason why I do that. Do you use a full night crawler? Yeah. Most of the time I would use a full night crawler unless I'm just seeing, unless I'm catching smaller fish that are just striking it. And then I would switch to half a night crawler. But like a, like I said, color with these nomadic fish is, is huge. Those those uh, rosy reds, that's, those are always a great choice. And if they don't have them, what I told you about how to get the suckers to turn colors, all those things, they make a difference. They really do. Another thing about tip up fishing in general that nobody really talks about is when you buy your minnows here, the water temperature is how cold? 55? 50? Just faucet water, pretty much. Just faucet water, so 55 maybe. So when you drop that minnow in, it's, it's, it's alive. It's not going to die. But there's a transition there where it's, it's, it's feeling it's not going to potentially be as lively as you want it. Another thing that'll separate a tip up fisherman from the next guy is taking your what you're, you're taking your minnow and what you're doing is you're keeping it outside for a night and putting a bubbler on it. Now your temperature your of your water is closer to the temperature that you're gonna put it in the lake. And you're gonna have hardier minnows and you're gonna have more success on on adding your tip ups. Another simple thing. Oh I always I always hook um 
I'm always hooking shiners or hunts or smelt right through the back. Generally, when we're fishing for trout and salmon under the ice, if I'm using suckers or rosy reds, those suckers, they usually want to shoot down and you got that thing four or five feet under the ice. I was telling you before how I like to literally have my minnow bouncing under the ice. So what I want to do is hook those bottom minnow feeding fish, like your, your hunts or your suckers, I want to hook them in the tail so they're bouncing right off the ice. So they want to try to get up and get out, get out, get the hook off, and they're bouncing around like that. To me, did you have a question? Yeah, or, I do. Do you ever clip the fins I, in the minnows? only clip the fins when I'm predator fishing for big pike or walleye. That seems to make a big difference, but not when I'm fishing for trout and salmon, <clears throat> uh, especially rainbows and salmon, I want that minnow as active as I can get it and I want it as natural as I can. Mm -hmm. So I don't, because if you clip a minnow, uh, I, it, I just want that thing alive as long as I can keep it. So I try not to do that. Because for the walleyes, you don't want that much action. Yeah, well, a lot of times I think those predator fish want to see something wounded and might trigger a hit. Okay. You know what I mean? Perfect. Perfect. That's basically where I am with that. But for the most part, we're talk we've covered the tip up setups on rainbows and trout and browns at this point, right? Does anybody else have any more questions on that? So then we could go to we could start talking about lake trout, which is probably a lot of reason why most of the guys are here probably. Lake trout, they're a blast. I mean everybody loves fishing for for lakers uh lake george is one of the best lakes in the state for jig and lake trout um they're an awesome fish they're they're not as nomadic as a salmon or, or a rainbow so you can you can you can have some good luck finding targeting those fish pretty regularly does everyone have a fish finder mostly if you if you want to fish really successfully for lake trout in deeper water you, you'll find a lake a fish finder will just open up your world to a whole new a whole new level of jigging fish so when i jig for lake trout i'm using a mid, medium heavy action i like a long rod this is actually a rod that i use this particular rod um i like a i like a, a longer rod so i can get a lot of a lot of motion because i'm doing a lot of tall lifting on my jigs um i'm using I try to use fluorocarbon about eight to ten pound test because you if you have fluorocarbon it's generally pretty clear you can get away with using eight to ten pound test um they lake trout are a little more predictable you're going to mostly find them feeding in any anywhere between you know 40 to as deep as you can get and specifically talking about lake george and you can basically find start off on the bottom with these fish um i'm basically i only have a few weapons of choice when i'm fishing for them and they're pretty much tubes and swedish pimples and buck shots which i didn't grab but you guys know what the buck shots are just a more rat uh they're more of a shorter rounder spoon with a um with a rattle on the back um silver gold anything like that is optimal colors for for lake trout and i always i'll always uh tip tip my uh jig with some sort of sucker tail or just a chunk of meat and then again i'll always try to put some sort of scent on it um but what when you get out of lake george it can be intimidating basically you literally don't even need to you basically need just to get out there and start finding deeper water and just start there and you can literally find some fish as you as you make your way out and just keep kind of cruising you'll eventually find some fishes you don't have to go to any particular spot to start off to feel confident so it's basically it's a, it's a great way to spend the day you can kind of just cruise around drill some holes set your finder down starting to start potentially you don't see any fish on your on your finder you're dropping your lure down the best thing about a fish finder which anyone who has one, you can actually adapt to how these fish are reacting on the screen. You can see if they're liking your presentation. You can see if they're gonna, if they're not liking your presentation. You can change your lures and see if they respond. You could have a laker sitting on your screen. You drop down a Swedish pimple. You can see him come up slow, look at it, and drop down. And you can say, all right, let me. You can try different jigging motions, and you can really learn what these fish respond to in that particular day. Um, 
tip-offs, typically you want to fish various water columns, start off on the bottom, work, work your way up. Um, you're allowed six lines in the water, so you can have six tip-offs, but then you're done jigging. So you can have five tip-offs and a jig stick, so seven, seven lines? Seven lines now, yeah. Seven lines. I meant seven lines. I knew that, actually. Yeah, so you, as, long, as long as you have seven lines in. Thanks, Neil. So basically, if you're gonna if you're gonna stay, set up a base camp and stay put, you got your five or six tip ups out, and then you can and then you can walk around and jig. And what you want, what you really want to do is 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 basically cover as much of the water column as you can with your tip up setups. I always fish big bait for lake trout. I personally try to fish the biggest bait I can get, um, dead or alive, and. It's all about experimenting on that particular day. What's gonna what's gonna work for you? And as you as you start to hone in on your areas, you'll see what 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 these fish are hitting. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Um, when I'm using these these tubes, I, I absolutely love using this uh, smelt right sense on them too. Another really good good tip for you. Definitely want to use scent. Um, and again, you can you can ask anybody here. They can get you started on a great spot to start trying to go out and experiment with your jig. Um, do a lot of guys interested in, in jigging for Lakers, particularly, pretty much. Um, but I find the work for me is I I basically will drop my tube down to the bottom, I'll kind of stir up the bottom. Half the time, if there's fish around, they'll, they'll already be right on your lure as it's dropping down, potentially hitting it at that point. Um, but then again, you can sit there for 20 minutes, just ripping your lure up and down, and all of a sudden, the lake trout will shoot up the water column. One of the cool things about lakers and fish is they'll literally chase your bait, and that's a lot of times how you'll get a trigger and strike. So as you drop your lure down, you see the laker try to come up to the lure. If he doesn't hit it right there at that moment, you reel your line up, and you can literally He'll, he'll chase it right up the water column and grab it. It's a really good tip. Um, a lot of times you'll have a bunch of fish around and they just won't hit. And you can throw down the kitchen sink at them and they just might not be feeding at that time. So that at that point, you'll notice that you'll get do really good first ice and, uh, or I mean, first light and last light. A lot of times, especially on Lake George. Um, what about a jigging motion for a spoon? Some guys will fish a spoon and uh, a tube and will try and jig them the same way. Well, with a tube, obviously, it's, it's a lot slower balling. So you got to move a lot slower on your jig. So you're just slow lifts, you just let it fall. With the lake trout, you're literally, a lot of times, they're going to hit your lure on the drop. So you're literally going to see, you're, you're constantly watching your line and clearing your line from the hole as you lifting your eyes and your line is dropping, what you want to see is your line stop. When your line is stopped, that, and you know you're not on the bottom, that fish is grabbed it. At that point, you lose that fish if you just keep going down, if you don't, if you don't realize that occurs. When that happens, you are stepping back. It's, you're getting a good step back. As you step back, you're setting the hook, because then, that, then you just clear that slack as fast as you can. You're reeling in as fast as you can. So as the fish is dropping, your line's gonna stop, reel in and pull back at the same time just to catch up, just to catch up with that fish. And they'll be there. Um, and they do that so many times. And that's where another thing when you're fishing for lake trout that a lot of guys don't know, so they'll just wait till they feel a heavy weight and keep jigging. But you constantly watch line for that for those hits. And that's when you're gonna get a strike. And if you have a fish finder, you won't even see the fish on the finder, and boom, it'll be there out of nowhere. You'll have a fish on. Sometimes they're quicker than your than your finder when they come in. Um, tubes. Uh, another thing is I noticed is they're either hitting the slow fall presentation or they're hitting the spoons. They're either they're either slamming on the spoons or they're slamming on the tube, depending on how they feel that day. So definitely, your best bet is to go with some tweeze pebbles, and some tubes, and some buck shots. Tip that with some minnows. Another really awesome tip is um, bucktail, white bucktail with red eyes. Um, tip with a sucker fillet with that smelt oil, and and that's always been always been successful. Prior to fish finders, I used to go out in Lake George, and I used to spend 
a couple seasons just with fishing lake trout, just with the jig sticks. I have a white bucktail with a slab of sucker, and I would drop it to the bottom, bounce it off the bottom a few times, lift it up a foot, and then just make big sweeps. And then I'd reel it up. If I didn't get a slam, I'd drop it back down. Now that we have these fish finders, you can actually precisely tell when you need to do any one of those motions. You can say, oh, here he is. He's chasing him. He's not hitting So now I'm reeling it fast and fast. Bam, there he strikes it. Got him. 95% of your hits are going to be like that. You'll, you'll, unless they're really feeding, you're going to have to really anticipate. You're going to have to entice them to strike. But let's talk about stuff that you guys want to talk about. Um, if you ever fish Lake Champlain for the Lakers? Yeah. And what's your opinion? I, a lot of the tools that are very fruit, they'd rather pick it that one off the bottom than swim after, swim after one? Yes. Yes. I mean, it's very true. I, If you can catch natural bait and it's legal like Lake Champlain, you can catch them out in Cisco and drop them dead on the bottom. Man, you'll have great luck. Same thing with Lake George. I mean, you can't, you can't uh, use smelt, but if you catch a Cisco and you throw that thing on dead on the bottom, you will have success. I don't know what's going on on that. Hey, Rob. Mr. Higgins. Officer Higgins. No, I've got a question for you, though. What, what, he, he just mentioned something about the smelt or not. You can't use them for bait. No, um, one of our fisheries biologists told me he put in a proposal to allow uh, a certain number of uh, smelt to be kept uh, for bait and stuff like that. I think maybe 25, I think he said. But it, he said it'd take maybe two, three years to, uh, to see right. anything. Yeah, so that's what I thought. So it was a question. Well, he would ask, he, he had said he thought that you could use smelt as bait this year, and I said I didn't think so. So basically, we were talking about Lake George. So smelt are, you can't use them, you can't eat them, you can't, you know, if you catch them, you throw them at um, But Lake Champlain, if you can throw a dead smelt on the bottom or some of these lakes in the Adirondacks, if you can catch the bait in the lake and use it that day in the lake, that, those are natural baits, always been an awesome way to go with those things. Um, I think they do that for life, yeah. How much, how much attention do you pay to, how much success do you contribute to the weather? The weather, one of the best things that I've ever noticed, and it's amazing, download, if you have some, your smartphone worthy, download a solar lunar app. And do yourself a favor, and just watch as you're, if you're that guy that's fishing every day, which I was for 20 years. Now I have a one-year-old, so I'm not out there that much. But if you watch that solar lunar calendar, when it comes to, if you watch where it says the major moon phase, basically the, base, the basic principle is that is that when the moon is above you or directly below you or the sun is above you or directly below you. So when you're fishing, have you ever noticed the moon's coming up and you see the moon rising during the day? You see the moon come out and it sets. If you pay it, basically, if you they have an app, you can actually tell you when that time happens. If you pay attention to that, I swear to you, you'll notice. You'll you will see if you're a tip up fisherman, you'll see your tip ups thing at those times. You don't pay any attention to high pressure, low pressure. I do. Um, it's weird to me. I, every lake responds to high and low pressure very personally. Like those fish respond very personally to that lake. Uh, I can give you a tip on Lake George. When there is a low pressure system coming in, everyone's like, oh, there's a storm coming tomorrow, let's fish. 95% of the time I fish that day before a storm, I get scummed. But if you fish two days before that storm, I slam it. So two days before a low pressure system is when I see me crush them on the pond. I'm not saying that you're not going to have a great day in a snowstorm or, or, you know, right before a storm, so it's pretty good. But that's just something I noticed about Lake George in particular, and I think it's different on everybody who wants. Um, any other questions? Because I like the questions. Excuse me, I'm taking um, for rookies and brownies and shell ponds. What would your action be? Would it be more like for perch? I mean, you're not going to be doing big rips. To be honest with you, I would be fishing with the, the rapalas. So, and I want to, the main thing with catching the trout through the ice is you want to be where, at, their, at where they are in their water column. And that's the biggest trick to catching them. It's not like you're not going to catch them if they're there. So, if you're catching, if you're seeing fish, 
over a deep hole and you're seeing these, these rainbows are coming through at seven or eight feet, you need to be down at that depth. That's the biggest tip I could give you on that. Are you vibrating? Are you lifting? With a jig and rapala, I'm, I'm, you just did I'm darting it. No, I'm darting it. Darting it around slow, you know. Um, what I particularly would want to do if I had a good rainbow population that I was fishing for with my rod, I would just want to put a slip bobber or a bobber on there with with a rosy red, something with color, or a night brawler. Seven foot under. The ponds I'm referring to the ones we can't use on the Okay, so then at that point, then you'd want to be worth a jig and rapala or a slender spoon or something with color, something shiny. You could use bait other than fish. You can use worms. You can use spikes. You can use worms or any sort of other um, insect. I would try that. They would bite on spikes. They may. Um, it's definitely worth it, but I would try a little bigger, something a little bigger. That would be mousies. Something like that, some sort of larva or some sort of um, some sort of a bigger fly or hat, a stone a stone fly or something like that, or or a nightcrawler. Nightcrawlers work really well. They do great on nightcrawlers. Don't work. Right? Yeah. You throw your line in if you have a fish on in a few minutes, you're dead. <laughs> yeah. you I I find that they either work awesome for trout or they stink, depending on that day. You know, they're either going to crush them or they're not. And that's why I never stick to just minnows or just night crawlers on my table. But I mean, these tips, I guarantee I've seen. I know they make a difference. I mean, I know I see guys really do well on using these tactics. So I know that that will give you a great start for, for targeting trout and salmon for sure. So you fish for salmon? Yeah. Fish for salmon? I haven't fished for salmon lately for the ice. Most of the same that I do catch on oysters. Yeah, you buy ices and you use them chicken or you can fish it with perch. Okay. The perch set. But lake trout, like you said, that the bottom is the smell. You're getting some big salmon right now out of that lake. Salmon? No salmon right now out of that lake. Salmon through the ice? Jigging? Yeah. How many perch fishermen have you, hey, Rob? How many perch fishermen have you heard accidentally catch a salmon? Well, Some pretty much all of them. All the guys that are catching. Are you talking about salmon or lake trout? Salmon. Oh, I don't know about the salmon. Salmon, but the the lake same, trout especially. Salmon are the same way. Yeah. We just don't have a huge population, but these yeah. salmon are in. They're in shallow waters, cruising for bait, and and you can get in those bays. We. I was just talking with my buddy, and I was like, I'm I'm gonna spend time fishing for salmon and jigging for salmon this year because you're gonna get them I mean, we used to get them all the time in perch beds on on little spoons when we used to use big instead of before we used to have our micro presentation for perch we were all using we're all about spoons yeah and you were catching salmon on those i think your best bet at catching a salmon or a trout is going to be on these jig and rapals and these slender spoons, and, and I have I have done it. You're not going to have a ton of success unless you unless you have a big population. That's that's the that's the real true story. But as far as lake trout in Lake George, I mean, Rob spends. I've seen Rob out there spending a lot of time jigging for lake trout. It's a lot of fun. I dialed them in at the end of the season. Finally, it's a lot of fun. And the cool thing about lake trout is. You can really, any access you have to the lake that you can get out there, you'll find lake trout not far away. You won't have to go far to find them. You just, you just have to put your time in, start figuring out. If you have, get a fish finder if you don't have one, and start figuring out, learn through your fish finder what they're going to hit. And that's, that's, basically the, that's basically it. Use your finder to de develop your strategy and become a better fisherman. And it's awesome. It's, it's so awesome. I stopped fishing. I didn't even, I lost the love of fishing and I bought a little rants and then all of a sudden I was fishing all the time. It just the learning curve went down. I learned so much. I was just computing all this data. Wow, look at these fish. They're here. They're not hitting. You'll look at your finder and you say, oh, there's a lake trout. You, it won't be, you'll know it's a lake trout by the way it shows up on your screen, by the way it's moving, by the way it responds to your lure. It's just, it's just a great tool. Do you find that um, with lake trout, I know like sometimes we hit them early in the morning or after the perch. You start, we usually don't start for lake or until later on in the year, you know. You start deep and work your way in, or you start, let's say, 30 plus with the first start, and then work your way out. I mean, it's, I'm pretty 
I'm, I wouldn't say I'm lazy, but I'd like to fish for them shallower than deeper. I mean, I want, I'd rather drop down 40 feet than drop down 150 myself. So yeah, I will start shallow and work my way out. Um, they trout, they trout move, but they don't move as, they're not moving around as much. They're, they're kind of cruising slowly. They're not all over the water column as much um, in the wintertime. So once you start finding a couple, you, you stick around and you'll, they'll still be they'll be around they'll be fishing around you could i generally drill a ton of holes in an area and i work my way to through those holes until i start reading fish picking up fish or catching fish or any of the above once i start doing that then i slow down um as, as long as i know i got fish there then i know that potentially i'm going to catch one obviously but that's where i stop so and that happens with a fish finder and that gives you the confidence you know all right there the lake trout are here now it's up to me to catch them um, and that's that's the great part about it. Is there anything? Yeah. In Lake George, if you have a small population, you find them in a certain area of the lake, you smell like during the winter, like Champlain, they come down to the southern part of the lake, from, let's say around the bridge area, from West, let's say from Westport down to the bridge area. They seem to congregate in that area. They've been doing that for years and years and years. They're starting to come back in here now. But what I always find is the lake trout fishing so much better. From coming into those areas over the you know, shallow, actually shallow, not in the deep water. Yeah. They, they come in on the smell. Do you do the same thing here with the uh, lake drift? That means, yeah. The area up here where, what I'm getting at is there an area up here where the smell comes in? Yeah. I mean, the, the awesome part about that this lake is there's so many different habitats out there that they're really, they're in them all. Um, but in late season, it tends to be that as these smelts start to gather towards these these uh, the streams, you're going to find that the the fish are starting to stage up, the lake trout are starting to stage up on the outside of those, and you're also going to find the fish are a lot more active as the water just warms up half a degree or one degree, and you'll find them in a lot shallower. You'll get them in the trout move down and the smelt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and the lake trout not only feed on the smell, but they also feed on the ciscos in the lake. So they have really, they have every single depth of the water, I mean, to, to feel free to be in. I mean, uh, potentially you could find the deepest spot in the lake and have a school of ciscos down there and, and have lake trout sitting there on them all year long, not even moving, just right there, just staying there. And those spots can be, you know, so minuscule compared to the, the whole body of water and that's where your fish finder is going to come in handy as far as smell go um it's been my experience in lake george that if you can find deep drop-offs or sunken islands or islands near deep water a lot of times you'll find that the lake trout are trying and the salmon are trying to push those fish and feed off those fish into those rocks so another tip up setup would be to run them along deeper water but along rock patterns and along rock edges been a big success. One risk you do take on that is when you do catch a lake trout, chances are he's going to run you into the rocks. So you can't you can't wait too long on getting to your tip ups. So that's just something to think about. Where are we finding those rocks? Well, you can just get a you just get a map, or um, and you'll you'll see uh, there's plenty of spots on on the lake where you'll see right off uh, right off the shore it'll drop right down into 60, 70, 80, 100 feet. And you find those spots, and those are what I like to call edges. What I'm saying, like for when I'm fishing for rainbows and salmon, I look for edges, especially early ice. I'm looking for those those edges, the target. And then basically, you're trying. It's just like any fish species. You're trying to target what they're feeding on, so you're trying to find the bait. Um, but they're not they're not as nomadic as the salmon. Salmon are are pretty pretty cool fish to try to figure out. That's that's why I like it. Oh, yeah, I brought that down here. So, what I'm doing, what I'm doing is, uh, I'm just inserting uh, various weights for various depths. You know, I'll go heavier or deeper one. But I'm just basically running the tube, you know, just like this. Just run, running this inside here. You know, I'm just pushing it up. What's your favorite color? Ooh, um, 
on Lake George, I really like smoke litter or white. Um, any, anything to mimic uh, the natural bait, so the smell to the Cisco. So I try to fish either a white. You know what color? Here's another awesome, awesome tip. Uh, is green. I've always had great success with green, especially in Lake George. Like a green pumpkin, watermelon seed? Like, uh, like, like a neon green. It's, it's, for what it's worth, that works to me. That's always, I've always had success with it. Yeah. Perch, hope, works too, yeah. perch, it's always worked awesome on Lake George, particularly and Lake Trout. But, so then with this, the, the only thing different I would do with this is I'm probably going to fillet a little piece of sucker. I'm going to throw it right on there. And you want to have, let's see if I can remember. You want to have the skin up. So you hook through the meat so the skin's facing this way. So when the meat flaps over here, it doesn't constantly get stuck on the top of your hook. What will happen is you'll be jigging and your your sucker will catch the meat and you'll have the sucker be falls off by the moment you, when you catch a fish and try. So, and you'll get the feel that as you're working your jig, um, another clutch thing for deep, deep water jigging is I is you want to put a barrel swivel. You want to put a barrel swivel about a foot and a half above your above your jig, and what that eliminates is line twist, and it, it also stops your lure from you know it'll twist and it'll flip up on you. It'll it'll stop that. And I don't know about your tackle box, but there are some lures that if I put that lure on, no matter what I do, it wants to flip up on my hook. And it could be the same. It could be the same Swedish pimple. It could be the same size Swedish pimple as the other ten I have. For whatever reason, that one just wants to get hooked up on my line. You know what I mean? So that one just I don't ever use. I just, <laughs> but that's that's those are the only those are the, the specific things that I you know I notice. But that barrel swivel does help for the deep water for sure. Any other ideas or questions? We basically, basically covered it. Now we just need to get some ice. Pike, that's my Pike is my specialty. That's that's my thing. I could talk about that for a really long time. <laughs> well, I'll come to your restaurant and talk about Pike. How about that? <laughs> big, 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 big. Yeah. Walleye, are, yeah, they're they're different. I mean, but walleye, uh, the big bait, big fish is usually good with everything. But walleye, the only thing is their uh, the way their eyes work. You know, they tend to use big bait at night, small bait during the day. But as a rule, that's what you want to do. Um, and but walleye are awesome. That's another awesome fish to target through the ice. I mean. I get excited because my struggle is like last year I told you I primarily fished for catfish through the ice because it was just a new experience. It was a lot of fun and it was just a, just a learn a time to learn about a new species. I enjoy very I enjoy very much learning how to catch anything that swims. And that's just something that I really love. Some guys will just bird fish, some guys will just lake trout fish, some guys will just walleye fish. I want to learn it all. And I that I have spent I have been ice fishing like avidly since I could remember, and I remember going when I was five. But as soon as you know, as I was allowed, I was fishing by myself at like ten or eleven, and I was just doing it whenever I could. And I'm a musician, so I have most of my days free to fish. So I spent a lot of time, and I think that's what separates just the time. It's just time. It's just figuring out your lake, figuring out your species, and putting the time in. And if you don't have the time, download that Solar Lunar app because I'm telling you it works. When you when it says it's a major feeding time, it really it, it's really awesome how 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 uh, this the world works, you know. And you, you get to see when it says these fish are feeding, they probably are. It's pretty cool. Do you find this the uh, similar setup on your typical works for walleye and trout? We fish a lot up on Sacramento up in the north end, and, and well, we, we don't know what we don't know what we're we're looking for in one in any one any given day and. You might catch walleye in the morning and, and trout in the morning. What's not really exactly good? the same setup. The only difference with Sakadaga, or the only difference with that, would be the depth. But other than that, yeah, I think um, if you're using, you want a little thicker line. You know, you probably want that eight pound. I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah, I, I say use ten. But I've always been a fan of the single hook, yellow, chartreuse, green. I like using color on my single hooks. Yeah. Yeah. So for for walleye particularly. Yeah. For basically any fish, particularly, I will experiment with, with with color, hook colors. I'll experiment with beads. I'll experiment with noise, with flash. 
there's nothing. I mean, there's you're you're gonna benefit by you're gonna benefit by breaking the mold a little bit and experimenting and not doing the same thing that everyone else is doing. I can literally sit in a spot with 20 guys and there's one guy catching the fish and he's he's doing just about everything that everyone else is doing. And I say just about, there's probably one little minute difference in what he's doing and it makes a difference. And you just have to figure that out, obviously. I have great success um, tip up fishing for, for pike and lakers and I've, I've always done really well with pike. I love jigging for lake trout. That's that's what I'll spend a lot of my time doing on Lake George when I have that time. But most of my youth was spent trying to figure out how to catch anything that swims. So I, this year particularly, I'll be fishing a lot for, for rainbow trout and brown trout. And I'll be up in the smaller ponds, obviously, with the way this year's going. So that's and that's exciting because I haven't done that in about eight years because I've been so stuck on fishing Lake George. So it'll be good. I'm looking forward to that change. For uh, perch fishing, when you using tip up, do you use the same size 18 trouble and just drop it down to? Uh, I wouldn't just because it's a, if you're gonna they just get swallowed the hook yeah. and then you gotta dig a treble hook out of them all the time. Um, better off just digging. Better, no, better off just digging a. But I would use the same hook uh, and I would use a long. I would use a size six and I'd also use a long a long shafted hook so I could just easily pick the hook out. I mean, that's particularly how I would just be like kind of that I would be more. more that's why I would be fishing with travels or with for perch. So, any other questions? Steve, are we going to have a tournament this year? I don't know, but let's hope. Jeez, let's hope so. If, there's a couple really cool tournaments on Lake George this year. There will be the one that Fish 07 does. There's, a, there's the going north, the Hague tournament up in north. Do you, you live on Sakadaga? Uh, we have a place up there. You have a place up there? Fisheries Federation has one in January. Last year was an exceptional year. Those pipes were awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. 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 I cool. 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 Yeah, that's just awesome. Fish out too. There's three major tournaments. So I think we covered everything. If you guys have any other questions, if there's anything I didn't cover, let me know. But most of the good stuff was in the first half of that. So <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Rainbow for rainbow. I forgot to talk about one thing that I really want to talk about. I tried. I want to use teasers. I use teasers. Teaser flies. Well, you guys can post these on live stream right now. Start live streaming right now. Excellent. Looking over. So next week they'll be up on live. No kidding. How long will they be on there for? I use. Like I don't know. Awesome. What do I just charge it? Fish 307 in the seminar? I go more than a fish 307. Yep. And I'll uh, you know, yeah, try to yeah. They'll all be posted right there. Uh, cool. And we'll have links out to the other stuff on the Facebook. If you're on the Facebook, all the links are there as well. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. I actually got to see you. Yeah, when I